Hello everyone. For this video, we will talk about how to create irregular shapes of columns or walls or any type of element actually in Revit. So basically, when you start modeling your project, sometimes you use the already created families in Revit, whether you find it in Revit library or sometimes you look uh, through the internet or through the Autodesk app uh, or store, you will try to find a proper family for your projects. Sometimes you have irregular shapes, so you will have to create your own family uh, to be able to model uh, this element. So basically, there are two ways to do this. The first one is to create your own family. You are going to start from scratch or start creating your family, and then you will use this family for all your projects or anything else. And the other way is to just create a model in place, something to use specifically for this project so you're not going to use anywhere else. So you will just model these irregular shapes inside your projects. And we will discuss both ways together. And I will tell you how to uh, create any shape actually uh, for your project. So let's try together uh, both ways. Let's open new model and I'll just create a new project. Now, let's say you want to create a column uh, with a specific shape. So what I'm going to do right now, uh, I'll go to view tab. I'll just try to create new structural plans. I'll just open the, these two structural plans. These are my two structural plans. And I'll go for the, uh, for the floor or the plan I want to create my model in. And the first thing I would do, I would just go to architecture. As you can see, for structure, you wouldn't find much component. And here I'm looking for creating component. You can find here in component and you can place a press model in place. You want to create a component that is model in place. You are creating this model in this place. So I'll be looking for what I need to create. There's a lot of options in here. But I want to create a structural column. So I would just press structural columns and I press OK. I will give it a name. I'll call it a regular column and I'll give it the type name. Let's say anything. I can just keep it like this. And I press OK. So what I'll what I want to create right now is just create an extrusion since this is a family, uh, this is a column. So I'm just trying to create a solid uh, object. I'll go for extrusion. This is what I'm going to create. And all the drawing tools are now open. So I'll just create my column for any shape I need. I'll just draw the shape, let's say that has a let's say 500 i'll go like this it has let's say 800 and i'll just press it like this i'll say i have the column in here this distance is 200 and i'll go down here and i'll just mirror this i'll just press mirror and i'll draw my mirror like this and i'll select these two lines again, both lines, and I'll just mirror again those two lines. And then I'll start trimming. Let's trim these elements. Okay. You might have something like this or whatever you have, the shape you have. And as you can see, this is the shape I've created. And I'll just press yes. So this is a fill. As you can see, you cannot really move it. Just go to the 3D. Let's go to the 3D to look into the element. As you can see, this is the element. And as you can see, you can just move it up or down to any place you need. I can go to any uh, elevation view. This is the element. And I'll just select to keep it up to this level. So I have created my column, let's say, or any shape, a wall, or anything I need. And I'll just take it from this level to this level. And as you can see, you can really control everything from here. You can find the depth is now created. And I'll press finish. Now let's try something. Let's get to this level. And I'll try to change this level to anything I need. I'll make it 3000. So as you can see, you cannot really control this extent to make it related to this level. Every time you will have to change it like this, you will have to keep aligning 
the column or to edit this extrusion to this level, you can try to align and let's see what happens. You can just align it like this. Let's try to look it. Now you have logged the elements to this level and I'll then I'll try to change the level again. As you can see, now the column is connected to this level. So you will have to do this every time. We'll have to connect it to the level you need. And I'll just try to look it to the family or the parameter, or let's go to the properties and see everything in here. As you can see, it has a rebar cover, but it doesn't have a structural material. So we'll just give it a structural material, as you can see, and look for concrete. I don't give it any concrete, let's say concrete cast in situ, I'll press OK. Now it has this uh, material and it can actually create any, uh, any shape you want. You can edit in place and you can press like this and you can edit the extrusion and you can change the drawing as you want for any shape you need. This is the first method. You can draw anything, as I said, you can draw walls, columns for any shape you need. You will just have to uh, draw something and that would look for your project. But after that, you cannot really uh, move this or use it in any other projects. You will have to create these irregular shapes every time you go for any project. But let's say you have this element or this type uh, duplicated or you have it uh, repeated for many projects. So it is better to do the second method and it is just creating your own family for this column. And I will talk how, uh, how to create this family type Let's do that together. Let's create new family. You can go to the home tab or the home screen as you can see. And here you can find families. You can open families or create new families. And there are actually two ways in here. You can open an already uh, existing structural uh, model or structural family and you can edit this family from this point. Or you can just create a new families from the library. You will get all the references and everything. So let's try creating new family. And I would look for something for my element. I would look for a family uh, that's uh, like my element. First, let's get back to family templates. I don't need the imperial. I'll go for English only. And I'll look for metric structural column. As you can see, here is metric structural column. Let's press open. As you can see, I'm creating a new uh, element or new projects or new family uh, in here. As you can see, these lines are the reference lines. These it is called reference line. You can start drawing your element from this point. This is the center point. You can find the depth. You can find that it's equal from this center point. And this width also from this point is created. You can see from that. So let's try creating our element from here. As you can see, you can start creating uh, the same thing. When you start creating model in place, you will find the same, uh, let's say, parameters or same forms that you can create. What I'm trying to create is an extrusion. This is the extrusion I'm trying to create. And I'll just start drawing something irregular again. Let's say I'm trying to draw something like this. Like this. And I'll give it just a bigger distance. And I'll then get it back in here. As you can see, draw different places and different uh, look, as you can see. So what you normally do right now, I'll press OK. This is the family. As you can see, I've created the extrusion. Let's go to any level from here. I don't go to any elevation view. As you can see, this is the level. I'll just get it back up in here to the upper reference level. This level actually is the level that is going to be created when you draw your element or you start putting your uh, element or your uh, column uh, in your project. You will find that you have to choose to select the height and you can find that you can do it for the next level or any level you want. So when you do that, you can just log that. So anytime you create this column, it will be between two uh, reference line or two levels, as you can see. So this is a very important step to make this always stick to the other level or to the next level or the level you want to stick it with. I'll get back to the lower reference level. This is a lower reference level. And to make this editable, uh, editable, so every time you can change that, you will find that there are two elements or two uh, dimensions. When I select that dimension, you will find something called label. So the label actually is a, the parameter that changes the dimensions of this element. This parameters, when it changes, then the element parameters will change and the shape of the element will change. As you can see, you'll find that the this width 
of this dimension will be from this point to this point. So whenever you change that, this point will change. As you can see, it is locked. So when you change that, let's try to change it. You can see that the element space is now changed. Now let's try to change the depths. I'll try to change the depths to something else, 800 for instance. As you can see, it keeps moving or keeps changing. Since these two parameters are actually enough to make this element uh, proper, you don't need actually to create anything else. Let's just go to the family types. As you can see, here is the depth. This is something you will find in your project when you start creating these types. As you can see, this is a type parameters. You can change the type exactly by changing the depth and width. Let's press apply. I press OK. So for this type or this shape, actually, this really, uh, I need something else or something more difficult. So let's try creating other shapes and I'll try to delete these dimension. I'll delete it. And I'll delete also this dimension. Delete this one and delete this one. Now let's try something more difficult or something else. I'll just uh, edit this extrusion. I'll get in this one. I'll mirror it, let's say to this type, this place, and I'll get it back in here. I'll select both, then mirror it again. As you can see from here, I'll draw a line between those two elements. And I'll delete all these lines. So as you can see, this is a new shape I need. This is actually how it looks. You can draw anything you need. I'll press OK. So now to make everything change, so you can change everything anytime, let's just make sure that in any elevation view, everything is fine and the drawing is locked for the next level. Let's get back to the lower level. This is the lower level. Now, before continuing and telling you how to create something customizable that you can change the width, the height, and anything you need, one of the most important things to pay attention to is these reference lines. Everything you are trying to draw just make it inside these different lines, uh, ref something reference to these lines. These lines are referenced to your model. So when you change anything, just make it relatable to this uh, reference line. So I'll just try to re, re modify the shape to make it just attached to, to this uh, reference lines. Uh, what I can do right now, let's say I'll just get this line. I'll try to mirror it by selecting this one. I'll say, I can also mirror this one by selecting this line. And I'll just trim it together. Just trim these lines together. And I'll mirror this area again by selecting this line. So something is duplicate. I'll just keep deleting, deleting, deleting. So this line or this shape right now is just in this reference. As you can see, it is reference to these lines. So I'll just press OK. Now, when you draw something that is related to these reference lines, everything makes easier when you create your parameters or innocent parameters or any uh, related parameters that we are going to stick to this shape. Uh, of course, you can do something else, but you will find some uh, hard uh, making this everything related to each other. So let's just make it uh, related to these reference lines. So what I'm gonna do right now is to make say, is things in here changeable. So you can change, let's say the widths, and say you can change the height and everything changes accordingly. So let's just go to annotate from here or you can find from modify the measure tool is now open. Let's just select these two reference lines. I don't just select it like this. I don't keep lock. I'll make the lock like this. And I'll select these two lines like this. And I'll just press the lock as you can see. Now let's try to create something else. I'll just create this like this. As you can see, this is the equal sign. I'll make it equal to make sure that these two lines are equal all the time. Also, from this part, I'll make it equal. You don't have to do this every time, but let's say this shape has this uh, parameters or this innocence. So now let's create a new innocence parameters. I'll go for the family type in here. And I'll delete the depths. I'll delete this parameter. I'll delete it. And this parameter also, I'll delete it. So you have two ways now to create these parameters. You can just create new parameters from here and I'll select the parameter and uh, change everything. I'll just select the element or the dimension. Let's say select this dimension. You can see here the label dimension is now activated. As you can see, there are two, the two labels from here. I'll just go to create new family parameter. I'll call it, let's say, A. 
I'll call it A. And this is a type parameter. So every time you will have to change the type, all the type, create new type uh, to change the, this parameter. If you made it an instant, that means that for every element, you will you can change the parameters or say the dimensions of this element. As you can see, the discipline is common. This is data type length, and this is grouping dimensions. I'll press OK. So this dimension is now locked as this, and I'll look at it like this as A. From this dimension also, I will look it, as you can see, it is already locked. I'll press parameters. I'll give it the name B. I'll press OK. Now I'll just close it like this. Now let's say, try changing these parameters in these dimension. I'll write 800. As you can see, it is now changing. And for this one, I will say I'll write 1000. As you can see, it is changing 1000 from the distance. So the, the uh, center point is uh, kept. So everything is kept uh, from here. Now let's just give it a family a family type or material type to make sure that this is always a structural element or concrete elements. So you don't have to face this problem during the construction or during the modeling technique or modeling uh, process. So to do this, just go up in here. You can find this uh, tab. You can choose the category and parameters for this element. This is a structural column, as we said. The section shape is not selected. So I'll just go to the, let's say, the material for model behavior. I'll just make it concrete to make sure that everything is related to concrete elements. And I'll press OK. So now what I will do, I'll just load it into my projects. Now this is my projects. You can see that I can just place it like this. This is the family. I'm sure I'll just uh, choose a right which grade, I'll press height, I'll just select it to level two. I'll just create the column, as you can see, as you can see, I'll press like this. So this is my column. And as you can see, it is from base level one to base level two, top level two. I can go to edit type, you can find A and B. I'll just try to change them, make this 2000, let's say this is 5000, I'll press okay. As you can see, it is now changing to my dimension or to the shape I want, as you can see. So you can actually do whatever you want with this type of families and you can create anything as you can see and you can create any shape or any uh, family actually for any type of uh, elements.